welcome or welcome back to 4F Beauty. Sing it with me. When will I be YouTube famous? I don't know. Probably never. However, what I do know, panic not that you are seeing me in black and white. This is deliberate because now this is the continuation of my photo inspiration collaboration series and I am delighted that this is round two with the ever so beautiful Marlene Modern. So, if you want to find out exactly which picture of the beautiful Marlene chose, what uh, this looks like in glorious Technicolor and which palettes I use to achieve it? My friend, you're in the right place. Here it comes. Hey, welcome back from the intro. Okay, hopefully the intro is in black and white. I know I say that every time but I know there's going to be a time I forget and hopefully me saying this, when I'm editing it down I'll go, oh yeah, I meant to be doing the intro in black and white. Anyway, this is uh, round two with Marlin on my photo inspiration collaboration series. I've got the picture here, I'll put it there for you. As you can see, she has chosen this gloriously coloured songbird. I genuinely have no idea if that's the actual colours of the bird in real life or if that's been photoshopped. Either way, He's beautiful, and I say he because when you think of the animal kingdom, it is usually, particularly birds, it is usually the males that are the pretty colours, like the peacock has got the huge great tail and the peahen's just brown. Basically, the females are the neutral palettes and uh, the, the males are the bright palettes to attract the females. So I'm guessing he's a he, but he's glorious. Purple, blue, green and yellow. Three of my favourite colours, all in one. Three of the most difficult colours to curate, <laughs> uh, all in one. And a little bit of white round his eye and his beak looks navy blue-ish. Right, so this baby arrived and I haven't played with her yet. So Although she's not got the right shade of blue, I think if I get her opened up, I think we will see in her uh, that I can certainly use the yellow and I can certainly use the purples. So, and possibly that white if it's got any... Uh, pigment to it. Hmm. Uh, some of these shades are pressed pigments, so technically not safe for eye use. In other words, they might stain your eye. Bitch, please. Uh, Texas Made, which is the hot pink on the top row. Dream It, which is the electric blue next to it, or the cobalt blue next to it. BBDC, which is the purple on the bottom row, and Believe, which is the other purple. Oh, fantastic. Uh, pretty much, yeah. I'm not surprised though, to be honest, because purples are difficult to create, uh, as are blues and greens, so a lot of companies now are choosing to do them as pressed pigments. So, I know what you're thinking. What is she going to use for the blue and the green? There we go. I'm going to be using my favourite slush palette, which, if you haven't already, I mean, I probably could do the whole bird with this, but I want to play with Alyssa. That sounds so wrong. But this is slush. She is stunning. I have used her many times and, and, super exciting news, my code BOMBER, 
all in caps for 10% off which up until now has been non-affiliated because so many of you beautiful lovelies have used my code I'm being made affiliated I'm, I'm actually going to start earning commission on it majorly majorly exciting um, genuinely not quite sure how, how, how that happened uh, I'm just super super pleased that so many of you have taken advantage of the 10% off uh, the 10% off will still remain the same the only difference being I'm gonna earn a little bit of commission when you use it now but as you all know that will not change my opinion on anything I have got um, brew her um, neutral palette coming out to me because I fell in love with that with the yellows and the oranges in it and everything mm. so for UK peeps who've been looking at the Colourpop Yes Please palette I think this could be a good alternative and of course you're supporting a UK indie brand so shut up Ange and put some colour on your face um, these photo collabs for those of you who've not watched any of them before <laughs> where have you been um, I jest basically you are inspired by the photo you can use any of the colours in the photo you don't have to use all of the colours but you cannot add colours in that are not already in the photo I feel like Jeffree Star welcome back to my channel <clears throat> and uh, my although I'm I'm not this is not going to be as much tutorial as um, my channel usually is but I will probably slip into some form of tutorial mode and that's the front door perfect timing hang on let's try that again let's see you in um, like I said uh, because of my chronic pain um, I'm probably gonna go a little bit slow for some of you um, but mine are aimed at beginners to mm. experts anyway so like I said, these are less tutorial and more about recreating the photo. I feel kind of lopsided. I feel like my thing has got twisted somehow. Let's see if that'll... Is that better? Yeah, I think so. Right. Um, <clears throat> I've got deep set eyes, so I do suffer with the same sort of problems that people with hooded eyes have in that I get transference of colour up onto my upper lid etc. Now if you can see all of your eyelid you don't have a hooded eye. It's only if your upper lid completely covers right down to the lash line that you have either a full or a half hooded eye or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye. People with deep set eyes often get confused by this because as I said we get similar issues but if I show you what I mean if I cover up my visible mobile lid and then close my eye you can see I've got as much lid again that tucks back in <clears throat> and if I cover the upper lid and close my eye I've got about half that space again on the upper lid that tucks so you can still follow my tutorial the majority of my tutorials are hooded eye friendly anyway because obviously I get the same issue if you don't have any visible lid or um, only half a visible lid, for example, the mobile lid, all you need to do is get a brush like this or a pencil brush and just sketch out where you need your crease to be. So whereas I'm going to follow my physical eyeball and socket to create my crease uh, point, you would need to create yours sort of three or four mils above it. Now obviously, this is going to decrease the space between your crease and your brow, so just use slightly smaller blending brushes. Shall we begin? Face is washed, moisturised, SPF'd and primed. Um, and I've used my anti-perspirant primer again, details of which are in the description box. Right. Now, the majority of him is purple and blue, so I think I 
think I'll do the purples and the blues first. So let's grab Alyssa Ashley. This is a really cheap brush that I got from AliExpress, got a set of them. But I just liked the diamond handles because they were like the Jeffrey ones. And I had these before the Jeffrey ones came out. Right. I am going to go into a Believe, which is one of the pressed pigments in here. And just picking that up on the brush. I'm not going to tap off because I haven't done my base yet anyway. I really don't care if I get fallout. And with pressed pigments, I want to get this looking as bright as possible. All I've got on my lid at the moment is Mac Soft Ochre Paint Pot, which I've not set. Uh, with powder or anything, but it has been on there now probably a good 20 minutes So it's had time. It's not it's not sticky to the touch, but it will still grab color really well All right, so I'm going to start off by Oh, hello pigment. Hello pigment I'm just gonna pop this sort of From the outer edge and just tapping it across to about halfway in Going in, picking up a little bit more pigment. And you can see I'm doing this with my eye open to make sure that I'll be able to see it above my crease. So I'm just going to build that colour up. Now with pressed pigments, obviously where I've not set the base yet, I didn't want to go straight in to blending with it. Now I've popped the, the colour down, I'm happy to do a little bit of very, very light blending. I'm holding the brush right at the end, look, so I put as little pr pressure on as possible. Going towards the nose, I do circles going that way, and coming back away from the nose, I do circles going that way. What this does, it gently moves your lid around a little bit so that you don't get any white patches anywhere. Um, the only difference I get this side, because this is the iron blind, you know, this was pulled around an awful lot at the ophthalmic. I don't know if you can see the difference there. The depth of the crease is this side. The circular movement doesn't always sort it out for me, so I do have to sometimes stretch that lid out. But I'll show you that when we get to that point. I'm really not worried that it's coming down here, because I think I'm going to do a cut crease today. Right. Okay, so I'm just going to keep building this up while I tell you a little bit about Marlin. Now, people that have watched me for a while will know that I follow an awful lot of Swedish YouTubers. I think I might have been Swedish in a, in a previous life. Um, and all the YouTubers that I, all the Swedish YouTubers I follow, all love colour, like me. Uh, the first one I discovered was Angelica Nyqvist. Through her I discovered Paulina, and obviously she's got all oh, the Paulina palette for Blush Tribe that I have a non-affiliated link for. Again, code BOMBER will save you 10% on Blush Tribe. Um, the Paulina palette, although it was supposed to be gone forever, there's been such a request for it, she's bringing it back. So if you wanted the Paulina palette and you missed out, get in there now because she's doing a pre-order. Um, and I think this is probably going to be the only time it comes back. So if you wanted Paulina and you missed out first time round, do not miss out this time. You will sometimes find that you get a little bit of... Um, you can see it's, as I'm blending this, it's looking sort of darker here and lighter here, almost patchy. That's partly because that's how pigments... Oh, for goodness sake. That's the door again. Hang on. Bloody energy salesman trying to get me to change suppliers. <sighs> Got to the door and he's like, Eh, oh, I'm awfully sorry. Have I interrupted you in the middle of doing your makeup? No, love, I always just do this and wander around like it for the rest of the day. Honestly. As I was saying, Paulina palette, if you want it, this is probably going to be the only chance you get. So, go get. If you get patching like that, the pigment is one that doesn't want to blend. I get that a lot with pigments because they've got such dense 
pigment molecules in it, they have fewer things like the talc and the mica, which is what helps them to blend. So I just, once I've got the edges all blended, just go back in and lightly tap on some extra pigment to sort out any patching. Right, and then I'm going to go across and do that eye. Yes, yeah, so then I, that's when I found Paulina. And then through Paulina, well, I found Jessica completely by accident because I'd done my... Um, how many palettes do I have film? I don't know if you know this, but when you're... A, when you're a creator on YouTube, when you put things up with, um, you know, specific hashtags and tags on it, when you when you load it up, you tend to see very similar films coming up in your news feed over the next few days. And I saw hers. I have fourteen hundred palettes, and I'm like, yeah, that's got to be a mistype. It's not a mistype. She's probably got more than that now. Um, so I started watching and initially the first film, all I saw was her hands going into her various drawers, showing off, um, she's got like loads of Alex drawers, showing off all of the different palettes and stuff that she's got. And I was like, good lord, this girl's got more bloody makeup than Sephora. Um, and then I sort of, so I sort of kept an eye on her channel. And then saw a few of her films where she was actually on camera rather than just her hands. And thought, yeah, do you know what? I like this girl. I like her, I like her temperament. I love the looks that she does. She's actually a trained makeup artist. Um, although she now works in finance. Um, so, you know, the girl knows what she's doing when it comes to makeup. And uh, she's got this gorgeous dog, Gunvald. Swedes seem to like their dogs because Paulina has a dog called Quetzicke. Um I keep sitting back and making sure the shapes are about even. Look, I've done cat size now, haven't I? Um, because obviously your eyes are not even. So, just to make sure the shapes are the same. Just going to clean this brush off on a microfiber cloth, and then I'm going to go into slush for some blue. Yeah, so that's when I found Jessica, and then through Jessica I found Linda, and I found Marlin. Um, Marlin astounds me. She genuinely does. She's got kids at home, and she works. And she just, she just looks immaculate, and some of the looks that she does, just fantastic. Right, I'm going to start off by going into Blue Hawaiian in um, Slush. And I'm just going to overlap on the purple a bit. Before... Continuing the colour across. I might pop some blue raspberry in it as well, but I want to start off with blue Hawaiian because I want this to be a nice bright look. Oh, I've just realised I'm going to the pub this evening with your hubby. Oh well, I have some mean worse looks, I suppose. That's just it. I do these bright looks, and people are like, oh, you can't go out like that. And yeah, I can, and I do. Yeah, so Marlin, um, she's very softly spoken. Is always apologising for her English, which is, is way better than my Swedish. I tell you, girl. Um, and she's just such an absolute darling, she really is. Um, and I've done a collab with Jessica. Um, and then I did a collab with Linda. And Marlin commented on. I think Linda's film and Jessica said you should do a collab with Angie you'd love it and I thought well, I wonder if she would because I'd only been following Marlin for about a month or so so I mean Jessica and and Linda I'd been watching for quite a while so they would have seen quite a few comments from me so I, I felt reasonably okay asking them to collab 
But I thought, mm, you know, Marley will only have seen like you know three or four comments from me. But I sent her a message and asked if she'd like to collab, and she said yes. And I was like, oh my goodness, that's amazing. Um, so we did our first round with this. As I always give people the choice um, on this photo series as to whether they would like to choose the first picture. And so far, every single one of them has been like, no, 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 it's your series, you choose the first one. I'm like, oh, okay. So, did that. And then, uh, I normally only send one picture over. Because if they don't like it, I can then go, okay, what is it about it that you didn't like? Because I've got, every time I see a picture, I think, oh, I could do an eye look from that. I screenshot it and put it into a folder on my phone. So I've got lots and lots of options. And um, the first picture that I sent over to Marlin was actually one that a friend of mine had taken. And it was the first sort of pastel y um, picture that I'd, I'd done. All the rest were quite bright colours. And at first she was, she said initially, because uh, I was watching her film, she's like, I was expecting bright and then I got this and I was like oh okay and then when she said that her friend had done it I was like she was so touched that I'd actually sent across a picture that my friend had taken um, and she was she was like really stunned by it it was um, well I say pastel it was it was kind of like a sunset over a lake so it was probably wasn't really what you'd call pastel but it was not as bright as this. Um, I thoroughly enjoyed it and I said to her you know, afterwards, thank you so much. If you'd like to do round two, let me know. Because I never want to assume that people, you know, want to do a second collab. I mean, I, I love it if they do, but, you know, I don't, I don't ever assume that they would. And she's like, yes, yes, of course, can I choose the picture this time? I'm like, oh, absolutely, that's the way it goes. You know, if we do a series of these um, collabs, then we take it in turns to choose the picture. And uh, she sent across quite a few because she couldn't decide what she wanted. And I just, I saw that bird and I was just like, oh has to be the bird and I sent back saying please can we do the bird is that okay and she's like yes that's awesome so I uh, popped it in the diary and uh, now we're doing the bird 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 is the word oh god I'm sorry I, if you're new to my channel I'm half Welsh half Yorkshire and I can turn pretty much anything into a song uh, or I can find a song that fits what I'm talking about it's it's a thing. I blether. If I'm going too slow for you, do please speed me up. I won't be offended. Okay. Now I've got butterfly wings. Marvellous. Right. I'm now going to show you the easy way to do a cut crease, regardless of the shape of your eyes. Just cleaning this blue off of the brush. As usual, stains a little bit, but then white brushes always do, don't they? Unfortunately, right now I need that brush and I need that brush. But right, these are they're actually acrylic nail acrylic brushes. I've got a number 12 and a number 14 here, and the reason I like these. so I don't lose the plastic things is because they come down super super thin which is exactly what you want when you're doing a cut crease now you can just use uh, a flat packer brush or um, an ordinary concealer brush but I've found that this gives me a lot more in um, accuracy that's the home phone, but you know what? That can just that can just ring because it's probably going to be somebody ringing to try and sell me stuff anyway. So yeah, right. So I've got my uh, this is actually shape tape. This is shade eight B porcelain beige, and I'm just picking some of that up 
on this brush. And then I'm just going to whack it on any old hair really onto my lid. And I'm going to open my eye and blink a few times. And that will put it up onto the upper lid so I can see exactly how high up I need to go with my cut crease. And this is what I was saying about if you have deep set eyes, you do have the same problem that people with hooded eyes have. Because you see, most people would just do their socket, which is here, but I have to go right up there. But by doing that, you do find out exactly what shape you need to use to cut your crease. I'm just going to put that back in there and I'm just going to grab a little mirror so I can see what I'm doing with a wee bit more accuracy here because obviously I can't actually close this eye because being blind in the other one if I close this eye not a lot of makeup happens so I've got additional product on the back there if I need to pop a little bit extra on but shape tape does tend to go quite a long way. I'm very tempted actually to try some of those Revolution um, cut crease bases that they've done. Um, I mean I've always just used concealer but a lot of people are raving about the, the cut crease base that Rev are doing so I might pick up the pure white one actually and it's worth taking your time with this just to make sure that you get it as accurate as possible I'm going to go in with a darker shade on the edge here anyway. And then what I do is I wipe all of the concealer off of that brush. And then I very lightly press the brush over every little bit of it. And what that will do, it picks up any excess product, see? Because if you have any thick bits, when you go to put your lid colour on, it'll start mixing in with the concealer and you won't get the colour that you want. So again, just wiping that brush off. I always keep one just for doing cut creases and then I'll go in with another one for the colour. So I think, let's get the yellow from uh, Alyssa. Because the yellow in, I'll just show you the difference. They are two slightly different yellows. This is the yellow from ABH, so it's a real citrus yellow. This is a warmer yellow from Slush, but I really want this one. So using this brush, I'm just going to pack some of this pigment called Brick Road. Oh, yellow Brick Road. Oh, you kill me. Pack it onto both sides of the brush and then literally just press it onto the lid.
once you've pressed it, pressed it on you can then sort of drag it out a bit but initially press the pigment in and then gently sweep any excess across and yes I've got fallout because I didn't knock anything off of the brush but I did that for a reason you know, I wanted it to be super, super bright, which it is. And now I'm going to go back into slush. Just going to clean the yellow off of this brush. And I'm going to go into lemon and lime and then possibly cucumber lime as well Ooh, I've got fluff on the end of my brush so again just press the colour onto the wet base I think I might take this green all the way across actually. And then gently wipe any additional pigment across and then what I'm going to do using the yellow from the slush palette which is called banana I'm just going to get a little bit on the very tips of the bristles and very gently smudge where the yellow meets the green just to blur the two colours together so you can't really see where one starts and one stops and that my friends is the dead simple way of doing a cut crease now because this is not tutorial this is uh, photo inspiration and I don't want the film to be majorly long when I do the other eye I'm probably going to speed it up a little bit but I'll be doing exactly the same thing. So I'll be going in with this brush and concealer and then I'll be going in with the other brush with the colours. Oh good, I actually managed to avoid to get any um, striping. Have a quick slurp. And now I'm probably going to speed you up and perhaps stick a little bit of music on for you.
Uh, let's go to that bit done. I don't know if any of you spotted it, but when I picked up my Anastasia palette, yeah, the brush just fell out completely. So I'm going to have to go and find that in a minute. Thankfully, it's still wrapped up and my kitchen floor is clean anyway, so... Just... Having cleaned this, I'm now popping it back into its little plastic sheath because it does keep things tucked together nicely and uh, helps to keep them nice and flat. I picked up a set of about six of these off of eBay for very, very little money actually. It was only sort of like, I think, five quid for six of them, if that. I am now going to go back into Alyssa because obviously he did have quite a dark blue beak. So I'm going to do a combination of Dream It and Beast. And I'm hoping this is going to work. This is my uh, Royal Langlois Chic Pro. It's just their, their, what they call their eyeshadow brush. And I've literally just like put the very, very tips in. And I'm just gently blending that into the outer V just here. Oh, that gorgeous lamb green finishes. Just to just darken up that bit there and bring in some of the blue from his beak. Well, at least his beak looks blue on my screen. It'll probably look black to most of you but on my on my iPhone at least it looks like a very very deep blue which is now probably completely indistinguishable from the purple I've put on there but I know it's blue you know it's blue everybody's happy so I'm literally just sort of tapping it onto the outer edge here also to help soften the uh, the edge of the cut crease that we put in I mean you can of course if you want to do a complete cut crease and go right the way across but for my shape eyes at least I do prefer having a deeper colour on the outside and this blue is Lovely. And the black's deepened it up quite well as well. Do you know what? I managed to get exactly the colour I wanted. What was the likelihood of that happening? Now what I am going to do, I'm going to get a very, very tiny brush. This is my Morphe M562 and I'm going to dip into the blue and the black again. And I'm just going to cut into the green just a little bit there. Just really, really fractionally, barely going in at all. Just because I want to deepen just that that part there so it looks like it's going across into the eye bit. The reason I do that is especially if you've um, had to create a crease 
doing this and obviously you would do it if you've had to move your crease up you would do this at the top of the yellow rather than where I'm positioning it because anything deep recedes and goes back so I just wanted to add a little bit of did I say yellow when I meant green? I did, didn't I? I just wanted to add a little bit just there just so it recedes back just that fraction more I like that. Right, I am going to go off camera and do my foundation etc and I will be back with you to finish off the eye look. So I will see you right now. And I'm back. And yes, I have very purple brows. Now if you've seen my coloured brows before, you'll know the purple pomade is more of a pink pomade. But I bought the blue one as well, so I mixed them together and now I've got my perfect purple brows that I wanted. Yay! Okie dokie, right, let's go back into Alyssa. And I'm going to get my nice flat top brush. And I'm going to go into... I'm going to go into Dream It, which is that blue. But this time use it without the black. Just bright that shows up. I'm just going to pop that right up tight under my bottom lashes. Going about that far along. Oh that's lovely. And the same thing this side. Yes, I'm flinching because I have no peripheral vision and I'm relying on muscle memory and a viewfinder to not poke myself in the eye. Regular viewers will know, not always successful. Oh, that's really nice. I'm going to be doing a palette bingo with a twist in a couple of weeks with this palette with um, Val from Gimme Lip and More. Goodness only knows which colours I'm going to get. Um, and I think... I think I'm going to go back into Slush actually. And I'm going to go into uh, Sour Apple. It's bright going at the bottom here. Now this brush was from the Tarte Graveyard Girl collaboration, but I like it because it's flat topped, but it's thicker. It's great for just blending out a lower lash line. I'm getting to wish I'd use this green up here now. Oh, it's still there. And what I like to do, because at the moment when my eyes are so runny with my fibro and hay fever, um, I'm tending to, to drag whatever colour I do here just up the outside of the top lid like that, because that then gives the illusion of having, uh, it does the same thing that um, having a cat's eye wing does. It just elongates the eye and makes it look more cat-like and elegant and youthful because it comes up at the ends. A number of times I see people do wings that either come straight out or go down. I'm just like, oh, you're dragging your eye down, you're making yourself look old. 
I do have a mini tutorial on how to do winged liner which is over in the playlist if you wanted to go and see. Oh look at that! Actually, I think this is um, just an old lipstick brush that I got from eBay yonks ago. I'm going to go in with Bubblegum from Slush, which is this icy blue. I'm just going to pop a little bit of that just up under the tail of my brow. Oof, hello. I love doing colourful looks. And because we're going to be going to the pub early enough, my god kids will still be allowed down in the bar. My best mate runs the pub. The kids are banned after half seven, they have to go back upstairs. We go up a little bit earlier tonight so I can see my god kids and give them lots of cuddles. I love seeing my god kids. Well, four of my god kids. We have, we have five godchildren now. We have my best mate's four kids and her husband. And we've got one of Chris's best mates, uh, who was one of our best men at our wedding, his son. And I have two nephews. So, lots of children. I love it. Okay, I'm going to pause you while I choose a highlighter, bung it on everywhere. Put some mascara on, put some lippy on, and I'll be back. Oh, I'll do something with my hair. <laughs> and I'll be back with the final look. I love these brows. Just want to show you something. Yes, I've put yellow in my inner rim of my light of my eyes. I bought this Maybelline lippy. Look how it arrived. Look. See this? Look at the mess. And there's nothing in here. It's not like it's come off in here at all. Annoying. Uh, yeah, this pot, by the way, I picked up the Colourpot gel liner in Punch because, uh, according to Paulina, this stays on her waterline so well she actually has to remove it at the end of the day. So I'm like, let's see if it will stay in my waterline then. Right, uh, back to lipstick. Okay. I'm back with suitably wafty hair. Uh, the lipstick is number 376 pink for me, if you're wondering. It's actually a really lovely colour. The highlight that I used is the Ofra Nikki Tutorials Space Baby because it's got a blue shift to it. Don't know if that's picking up in the mirror, hopefully. Uh, and my mascara was my usual Catrice Glam and Dull Waterproof because it's a dupe for. Bad girl bang, but it's waterproof and it's cheaper. So, uh, I'm just going to slide my camera that way a tad so I can put the picture back up there. This is my finished look based on that picture. What do you think? Do you think I've done the bird justice? Would you have done it like this or would you have done it differently? I must admit, Looking at it now, I wish I'd used that darker green up on the upper lid. Although I do like the lemon into lime. So, maybe I'm quite glad that I didn't. Super, super happy that combining the two brow pomades has given me proper purple brows because everyone was like, oh, I love your pink brows. And I'm like, they're meant to be purple. <laughs> but anyway, so there we go. Now that is today's look. I absolutely love this look. I've got to be honest, I really don't care that I'm going to the pub. Uh, I used two different setting sprays because I'm being extra. I used the Makeup Academy Pro Base Cooling Spray because it's hot. And then I'm very nearly out of my Gerard Watermelon. That's good because that means I can start on the coconut one soon. Uh, I do have uh, an affiliation with Gerard, but 
uh, long term viewers will know I've used Gerard for a long time before I actually got an affiliation card with them. All of my discount codes and stuff are listed in the description box, clearly marked whether they're affiliated or not. So, uh, please, please, please double check you are still subscribed because YouTube do keep unsubscribing people. I know this is true because I've been unsubscribed from channels that I watch. So, yeah. Uh, I've obviously I've got a lot of other films you can watch. I've got a whole folder full of these photo collabs. But before you go and watch any of those, I need you to go and watch the beautiful Marlin and just see what look she has done, how she has represented uh, that beautiful little birdie in her eye look. Right, that's it. I'm done. I need to get myself dressed and head to the pub because these are my lounging around the house. Doesn't matter if I get powder down the front of them clothes. Uh, all that remains for me to say, as ever, is you'll stay fabulous and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.